Why must the theater always tell a story? Why must it use language at all? Does theater always require actors? Why? as I do, that the time is so short that you just, we don't have time to run around and put on little plays for little people anymore, but that we have to make a difference in the lives of people who give us an hour and a half of their time, then you can make this a very, very real thing. Thanks so much for your diligence this morning. Gee, you're a tremendous group. Just fabulous. I love you. I do. I'd like this to be worthy of your time, too, as well as the audience, and as of a, as a mine. Now, it's short, which means that on a night like this where we came prepared, we may be tired, I don't challenge that, but we're emotionally and spiritually prepared to stay till the last man dies. That's not a very good figure, is it? Till the last cock crows, there's got to be one somewhere if I keep trying for it to the very end, which means that we can go through it several times if we have to. I don't care how tired we get tonight or how long we stay. We just have to push this thing as far as we can. And then, if you'll remind me, I'm going to call you early on Monday night so we can do the same thing again. And then Tuesday, we're going to figure out something else. And then on Wednesday night, we're going to be ready. We may be bleeding, but we're going to be ready. We work under a different premise here in the arena theater than we do in the other theaters on campus where everything is done with a paid crew. Here the premise is that we want the students to have the actual experience of taking care of the technical work themselves as a company. And so in the hanging of the lights, the construction of the screens that we use, the drapes, the cleanup afterwards, this is all done by the students as a company and gives them a great learning experience. How did you do your little thing, your design? Very carefully. I'll tell you the truth. The ellipsoid has two plano convex lenses, okay, and a segmented ellipsoid reflector in the back. If you take one of the lenses out, you shorten the focal length, and you get a pattern of the reflector. Of course, you get the picture of the filament. You get the picture of the lamp right on the, right on the deck. Let's see the lamp. But it looks neat. I, I want to show, I want to show, make, put people aware of physical, a physical movement, motion, without a story, without the elements of what dance really is. Do you want them involved or what? The original conception of the production, of course, yeah. is mine. I knew clearly what I wanted to do and had spent some time arriving at that decision. But immediately after casting, I divided the group into committees according to the particular talents that they seemed to have and asked them if they would participate with me in the exciting part of making this thing come alive. And so, uh, for example, with the dancers, I went to them and I said, we want to express Christian values in this production. Can you show me some of the beauty of the human body, and particularly that beauty as it changes under various kinds of light? And then they went out and worked out the resolution to that problem. The silent movies were written by members in the cast, and then I blocked it and directed it. And the slideshows consist of slides that were contributed according to my theme by a great number of people 
and then the slides were put together by Catherine, structured by her into their present form. And so we thought with the slides and screen projections, this would be a good way of, of not just the intellectualizing verbally, but um, uh, emphasizing a point. Wally Barris and his crew um, went up to Salik Temple, I believe twice, and took pictures. Because we need some very fine details of the stones on the side of the temple. He's starting out with little tiny things like on the temple, and then the uh, archways and so on, and pretty soon we start expanding it and showing the whole temple. Now the column down here, I don't think there's one stone out of line. And they were cut and laid by different people 40 years apart. about a general taking off of everything up here that does not belong on the egg crate. We should talk to Joe so nothing has a chance of falling down on us. Yeah. It's supposed to be there. Yeah. Joel! Joel! Oh, there. Much better. Beautiful. Much better. <laughs> I can't believe it. I do feel pretty handsome. Yeah, that's got a lot more to Don't it. Don't let it go to your head. I wonder if she's, is she going to give you a tie, ultimately, do you know? Well, I was asking about this collar is too tight. Well, they would never notice under the strobe. We could just get you a big tie. Yeah, a bow tie there, just tying that together would be good.
a lot of energy inside. So, just move very, very slowly. Now, 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 take a hold, take, the two girls take a hold of hands, we will take a hold of hands, and pull. And just see what the energy does by pulling. Reach all the way across. There's more. No, something in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I feel more tension with everybody. <laughs> well, I can't move my eyes. Okay. But just suddenly become tense, tense up, tighten up your body, feel, feel to the edge of the skin, and then start looking as an animal to see what surrounds you. Sort of. What does it look like? Good. Can you change the angle of it? Oh, yeah. and that's better. That's a spirit. Now hold right there. Hold, build, you know, try, try, try to find. And then you take him over. That's it. Now hold it right there. Well, I don't mean really to freeze. I mean... I think this is possibly the very most exciting thing in the entire production, although it's likely to be misunderstood. I'm working for a quality here that, for want of a better term, I'd call emotional saturation, in which I've tried to uh, take an idea, and in this instance it's the idea of that moment in life when the Spirit of God enters the man's body, and show it in its most exaggerated form so that without any question at all a person can understand that incredible electrifying event that happens as when Zacharias was stricken down by the angel that visited him for example. Oh, that's very good to there, I like that. That's good to there. Now flip him over and find another one. Yeah, you're the one that's got to get pressure. I'm going to put you this way. Uh, no, 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 that's, uh, you should have stopped there. You know, I think that you roll him over, he rolls you over. I think that's part of one. Okay, that's fine. I like, I like the almost um, uh, excitement of, of, when, of when, you, when you look out and you say, Ah, oh, world! The birth, it's a great thing. It's a great discovery. I think uh, we should constantly keep in mind that a part of the conception of this production was to take each of the elements of theater and look at, at each of them as an or art form, such as movement or light or costumes, instead of uh, merging them in the whole as we do in traditional theater. And so, of course, we use light to reveal uh, the other action that's on the stage as we do in traditional theater. But there are many times in the production when we're trying to have people think about lighting, look at it, see its beauty, its flexibility, how it communicates with us. An example of that is when we brought the fabric out and uh, showed the play of color on, on uh, various kinds of materials, when we showed the play of light on the bodies of the dancers, and when we brought the glass sculpture out and rotated it with a change of light on its surface. And I am commanded again to stretch forth my hand that the power of the Lord may manifest itself unto thee. Now, I know of a surety. You're going to watch it tonight, and one of the most satisfying things to me has been to see how Richard has grown in the part. Paul is a, a very capable performer to begin with, but Richard had some very serious vocal problems, and I, up until about five days before we opened, I fully intended to uh, put other voices on tape because I, frankly, I didn't tell Richard this, but I really didn't think that it would work, you know, that he could pull it off. But he and Paul had been working, they go out, I've never seen any, nobody in the play has worked harder than these two men, and he went out. And so I said, well, let's hear, you know, what you got tonight. And all of a sudden, whammo, here comes these big, full sounds out of him. He still has some articulation problems that he'll work on the rest of his life, as we all have. But gee, the power and the conviction, the intensity. You can, you can just feel those sparks. That's, that's lit. I can feel it every night, just as his fiance does, as he just lifts him right up there. And that's a great thrill to me, to watch these two men 
take something. My wife came and watched us block it out the first night. She said, honey, I'll pray for you. <laughs> and now it's something that I really look forward to. To me, it's a beautiful moment in the show. I know, I think the thing that really, though, that helped is that the polish was here. We were worked on it, you know, and got a feeling for it, but then there were just two or three moments, and I think this is where the director comes in, so there were minute, moments where we just felt uneasy, and he sensed it, and was able to work us into, a, for example, get into the handstand, the headstand for me. It, to me, it just felt like, all right, Cyril, it's time for you to walk out and stand on your head. But then, he, by watching, he was able just to move us right into it. So now, to me, it's just natural. It's a thing for me to do. Just a natural thing for me to do. I am filled with the power of the Lord, even to the consuming of my flesh. And he whosoever toucheth me shall wither as a dry reed. And he shall be not as the power of God, for God shall smite him. In our costume problems, as with all of the other elements of this production, we have been limited to those materials that we already have. This meant that our actors, with the help of Agnes Stewart, who served as the student costumer on the production, had to scurry around and look into the recesses of the costume shop to find those things that were appropriate and those things that fit. Sometimes, of course, we used our own costumes we would bring them and I would look at them and see if they uh, seemed to be appropriate. Right over to him and right over to him and then away and away you go. And about that much time too. That's the spirit. Good. How happy I am to see you. Good. Got your ears. Go. 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 That's the spirit. Right back in again with the stuff, just as I think this uh, silent movie will be one of the very most popular parts of the production. And it's also the moment in which the cast was involved, I think, at its highest point of creativity. I didn't write it. Zach Odom, my assistant director, did write it, and I just blocked it out for them so that they can rehearse it. When I say a silent movie, I mean just that. That is a uh, in performance, it will be given under a flashing or a strobe light, and there'll be no dialogue with it, and we'll have a kind of rinky-tink piano music in the background, doing everything we can to recall the flavor of the good old silent movies. It's in here primarily to entertain the audience. Quick, quick, quick. That was too long, incidentally. There we go. Movie. That's it. Okay. Face to face. Hmm? Close. Close. Now, hands. 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 Come on, come on, see it. Now, around, circles, caressing. Well? Oh, okay, now wrap around each other. Go. Move slowly. Oh, <laughs> dear. <laughs> the most important thing was to make people more aware of, of the very basic elements. Everyone sees color. But uh, very few people ever stop and, and, and look at color and see how many ranges of blue there is or, or what red color does on gold fabric or what a, a yellow would do to a green or what a blue would do to the movement in, in a body, what these colors might suggest. And so we hope that people would go away more aware of the basic elements. They'd say, oh, I never, I never really realized how much color can do. I never really experienced it. Or, for example, some of Dr. Woodbury's scenes where, say, uh, a kiss was done in many, many different qualities and many different moods. Uh, to be able to look at it, not try to get too much of a story, but just say, wow, what a revelation, you know, that, that a kiss has so many qualities. You can even kiss in anger and in hate. I love the glass. As you watch the glass, you see it start turning and whirling. Before too long, the images themselves get a feeling, you get a feeling of movement within them. Right. Yeah, and I get a, a sensation that I really enjoy. That's one of my favorite moments. Well, there's a number of them. The whole thing. I was watching that glass piece, and I got a conception I'd never had before. You know, that start, incidentally, that started as a family. We asked Trevor to do a family one. Except that, he said, well, in, I'm going to do an anti-mortal family, and in the anti-mortal state, everybody is full-grown. 
Well, that's a fine theory, except that nobody sees it as a family anymore. It should have had children, is what I'm saying, to maintain that idea. But I was sitting there the other day, and I just caught three dimensions, and, or two, actually, and I thought, that's man, and behind him was, the, was his larger spirit, and there's the spirit just perfectly framed. There's man and the, that other spirit that I'm just behind Paul, if I could just reach through and see it, and it thrilled me. How exciting that we could put two people, two people together, and, and see them just working together, feeling each other's arm movements through space so that they could improvise and work together. Janice, run in here with me and let me show quickly what I mean. Two people standing side by side, just being sensitive to what the other one is going to do, not knowing. But when one begins to move, the other moves, not exactly mirroring, but in a way that complements. I'm sure that the much of the unity in life, much of the sensitivity that brings groups together, couples together, and families together, can also be shown and experienced in the sensitivity of just motion and movement itself. Of course, we hope that it's unified by a theme. That's the whole premise of it. On the other hand, there's a very real problem, and I've had to fight this, and I think it's best exemplified in that thing about the, uh, the, the fabrics on the table, and that is that everybody wants to see a story. They want a smooth transition, one thing going into another. And I've been surprised the number of people who, instead of seeing what I wanted, which is to see the color of the fabric, have instead seen the action of getting down to the box. They want to know what's in the box. They want to know what's in the box, and they've missed it. They're, they're interested in the destination instead of the journey, you see? And the journey's the whole thing. And uh, I think that uh, there is some merit in having it without transition so that they're constantly, so they'll stop looking for that smooth flow from one thing into another, because it just doesn't add up that way. We love the art of the theater. We share Brigham Young's belief that it is society's most civilizing instrument. But why must the theater always tell a story? Why must it use language at all? Does theater always require actors? Why? In our technological age, when we can control audience perception, are we still limited to action and words? Why then do we not improve on the art of our ancestors? Should we not rather spend our time directing the senses of the spectator? And toward what end? Surely to entertain, but also to analyze important ideas and values. In our godless age, the need for God is unparalleled. But where shall we see him? God is in the details. The theater is a useful place for depicting elements, details. We find God in the order, complexity, and form of music, in the architectural detail of a famous and beloved building, in the resonance of color, texture, rhythm, the variety and beauty of human form and movement, in sculpture, light, glass, even in the infinite moods of a human kiss, or in that electrifying moment when God's power of revelation churns through the flesh of man. This then is our attempt to express in theatrical terms our vision of God.
we stop, we talk, a quiet kiss, and we walk on hand in hand. In a silent rain, in a sleeping world, alone yet unafraid. Did you ever kiss a girl? Yes, once. Was she pretty? Huh? The girl that you kissed. Oh, I don't know. I was blindfolded. But was it a party, one of those kissing games? Oh, I don't suppose that really counts, does it? Oh, it didn't with me. I've been kissed twice. How balmy breath that dost almost persuade justice to break her sword. One more. One more. Be thus when thou art dead. And I will kill thee and love thee after. One more, and this the last. I like you, and I know why. I like you because you're good to like. I like you, cause when I tell you something special, you know it's special. And you remember a long, long time. Once, a man I've never seen before kissed me on the cheek when he picked me up off the ice and I was crying. And the other was a friend of father's who kissed my hand. But you wouldn't say those counted, would you? I wouldn't say so. Have you prayed tonight? Aye, my lord. If you bethink yourself of any crime, and reconcile as yet to heaven and grace, solicit for it straight. Alas, my lord, what may you mean by this? We'll do it and be brief. I like you because you know I'm ticklish, but you don't tickle me. You know how to be silly, and that's why I like you. I know almost for certain that my sister would never kiss anyone unless she was engaged to them. And I'm sure, too, that mother never touched a man before father. But I don't know. Things are so different now. What do you think? Do you think a girl shouldn't kiss anyone unless she's engaged or something? It's so hard to try to think what to do when here we are with the whole world falling around our ears and you think, well, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. What do you think? We shall be two daring acrobats above the staring faces framed in wheels of light, visible to millions, yet revealed only to each other in the tiny circular mirrors of our pupils. Why are you ever silly? I never met anyone sillier than me. Oh, I met you. I like you because you know when it's time to stop being silly. Maybe day after tomorrow. Maybe never. Oops, too late. <laughs> it's quarter past silly. It's nine o'clock. I'll have to leave. That's right. Good night. You won't let them stop you coming. No. There are so many things I want to talk over with you. There's so much about you. What kind of things? I thought you were a nothing, just the way you thought about me. Really? I like you, because when I'm feeling sad, you don't cheer me up right away. Sometimes it's better to be sad. You can't stand the other so googly and gaggly every single minute. You have to think about things. It takes time. 
We shall climb together up the frail ladders, balancing on slender but still strong thongs of faith. And when you leap, my hands will be surely there at the ark's limit. You really like me, don't you? And I really like you back. And I like you back. And you like me back. And that's the way we keep on going every day. We shall synchronize each step of the dance upon the wire. We shall not fall as long as our gaze is not severed. Did you change your mind about me the way I changed mine about you? Well, we'll see.
Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of God, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, but shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb, and he shall turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Wherefore shall I know this? For I'm an old man and my wife is well stricken in years. I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God and am sent unto thee to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be fulfilled, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. I remember, I remember Father prophecy unto the people concerning the coming of one Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to atone for the sins of the world, O oh, Jesus, thou Son of God, have mercy on me, whom in God and bitterness and encircled in the everlasting chains of death. Let me go, for the day break. I shall not let thee go, except thou bless me. What is thy name? Jacob. Alma, arise and stand forth. For why persecutest the church of God? For the Lord hath said, This is my church and I will establish it, and nothing shall overthrow it save it be the transgressions of my people. And now behold, can ye dispute the power of God? Does not my voice shake the earth? And can ye even behold me before thee? And am I not sent from God? Therefore I say unto thee, Seek to destroy the church no more that their prayers may be answered, and even if this word of thyself be cast off. I say, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, for as a prince hath thou power with God and with man, and hath prevailed. I have seen God face to face, and my life has been preserved. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
By the power of Almighty God, I command you to touch me not, for I am filled with the power of the Lord, even to the consuming of my flesh. And he whosoever touches me shall wither as a dry reed, and he shall see not before the power of God, for God shall smite him. I have repented of my sins and hath been redeemed of the Lord. Behold, I am filled with the Spirit of God, and my soul hath been redeemed from the gall of bitterness and the bonds of iniquity. And now I behold the marvelous light of God, and my soul is pain no more. And I am commanded to stretch forth my hand again, that the power of the Lord may manifest itself unto thee. Now, I know of a surety that the power of the Lord is with thee. For we know that it is the power of God that has shaken us. Therefore, Worship the Lord thy God. Honor thy father and thy mother, that the days may be long in the land that the Lord thy God shall give thee. Then one of them spake unto me, calling me by name, and said, pointing to the other, This is my beloved son. Hear him. When the light had departed, I had no strength and found myself lying on my back, looking up into heaven. Soon strength returned, and recovering to some degree, I went home.
very much. I thought it was beautiful. I liked most of the We had a little, in, in, little insight to it, but I, my wife said, no, be prepared, anything might happen, so, and it did. It was very good, and we enjoyed it. That's what it's all about, isn't it? <laughs> Does it all boil down to the W-2 farms? I've heard people say this who've seen it and not been prepared for it, that at first they're puzzled and they're not sure just exactly what's going to happen and they're a little disoriented, and then it grows little by little, and by the end of it, they suddenly realize that uh, what was said in the beginning that they didn't pay much attention to is true, that the details do emphasize the existence of God. So they're kind of far out, but I think overall the audience enjoyed it. It's everything combined because it's a movement where it likes me. I was really impressed. I hope they do something like this again. I think it shows us something that, you know, we forget that once upon a, in the past, you know, they used a lot of dancing and so on to express religious feeling. That's beautiful. The play as a whole, I think, took a lot of courage to put together, a lot of create. I don't know how I'd describe my feeling. It was just so much that's around us every day that we don't really notice, you know, and, and it was just there in front of you. You had to see it. But I don't think, I think everything added on. I don't think any of it could have gone over by itself, could have stood by itself.